Hello everyone, Ty Godwin from SeekingBostonMarathon.com with another video blog. This would be a sequel to my Ultra Shoe Review two weeks ago. Uh, I, I, I hinted that I might be running in the Ultra Shoe in my next distance race, uh, which I did, and I'll talk about them in a minute. But uh, I would have to categorize my, first off, the, the Runner's World Half uh, Marathon and Festival, highly, highly recommend it. Uh, I'll probably have another post about the, the whole week as a, as a blog ambassador for Runner's World. It was just fantastic. But I'm still euphoric over the race that I had. Um, I've had probably two races that I can think of that were my most complete distance races. One was 2013 at the Boston Marathon, uh, the bombing year, where I, I, I felt like I had trained well and I had my most complete race. In this case, it's a half marathon. I did bring home... Some hardware, you gotta love hardware in the form of a beer glass, uh, fantastico. Uh, but it was my first distance race in 13 months, so I thought instead of a traditional race report, I would talk about the six success factors in a distance race. Uh, three I would put in the training category, and three I'd put in race day. A couple of those I learned from Ultra last week. I'll talk about those in a minute. Uh, but first off, it goes without saying, there are no shortcuts in the marathon discipline, unless your name is Mike Rossi, but I won't go there today, but I just did. Um, there are no shortcuts. So, so overall, there's a lot of hard work I've put in in the last uh, year on uh, getting back to uh, my race form. Uh, I talked about it in the last post, so the, the couple foot injuries I've had. Uh, this was my first distance race, as I mentioned, in 13 months. And uh, first I'll start with the three things that I did before race day. And first thing is strength and uh, stretching. Uh, if you read uh, Meb's book, which I've, I've written about, uh, there is no shortcut, uh, to use that term again, uh, uh, for getting ready for race day. And strength is a big part of it. If you look at all the elites, they spend a lot of time on uh, core strength and strengthening the temple. So I will uh, list some of those uh, uh, routines that I do, but I've got a, a, a training plan each week uh, for my strength work on top of my, my running schedule. A lot of that is, is uh, uh, planks. I, I've introduced the side plank. Um, so a lot of it is around strengthening the hips. Uh, I do side leg lifts. Uh, I do knee bends, uh, I do a lot of stretching, and I can just tell, you know, before even I, I got to the, to the start line, my legs are stronger than they probably have ever been, and um, that's a lot of hard work going into that. So w number one is, is strength work. Uh, you can't ignore that. Uh, the second one I got from my run coach, Benita Willis, and that is two hard workouts. Uh, I've got friends that are elites that I, I asked one girl, how many days a week do you train? And she's like, duh, seven. Uh, I, I average six to seven, uh, but only two of those days are hard workouts. Otherwise, you can tend to uh, burn yourself out, not be fresh on race day. Uh, one of those, and it varies throughout the training plan, whether it's a half marathon or marathon distance. Uh, but like today is an example. I just got back from my... My afternoon workout is two mile warm up, four mile repeats, alternating fast and faster, and then a two mile cool down. Uh, and those those four mile repeats were really more of a sub, I'd say sub uh, half marathon pace. Uh, so uh, I was clipping along pretty good. Uh, I typically do those either Tuesday, Wednesday, and then Saturday. Um, so. Uh, two hard workouts. You don't need to go five. You don't need to go seven. Take it easy. You can go real slow on those those other days. Because of my injuries, I did a lot of cross training on those other days. Um, so that that I think uh, actually helped me out. Uh, part of those two hard workouts um, are speed work and hill work. If you uh, have run the the, the uh, Runners World Half Marathon, it is not flat. Uh, there are a lot of hills, uh, and I was ready for them. Um, I, I 
outside my front door, I've got the advantage of living in Colorado, and I've got the advantage or disadvantage. I think it's an advantage. I've got hills every direction I go. So even my, my cool down runs all have hills. Uh, I, I do hill repeats, um, and I won't get into details of my plan. I'm assuming that you're going to go online, get a good run plan, but uh, hill work definitely paid off for me. Uh, the first, I'd say, seven miles of the half marathon were hills, and uh, I actually had negative splits, uh, which isn't great uh, in a half marathon. It's usually more notable if you can pull that off in a full marathon, but nevertheless, uh, I felt fresh and fast uh, mile 12 and 13, uh, my, my last uh, you know, sprint stretch, I was sub six minutes, my, one of my last two miles, I was sub seven minutes, and uh, like I said, I think I was half faster in that second half. Uh, I would attribute that to hill workout, but also yasos. Um, I, I do a ton of yasos. Uh, I, I tend to uh, do that on that speed workout day, uh, Tuesday or Wednesday. Um, and when I'm starting out a marathon plan or half marathon plan, you may only do four or five of them. But as you go week to week, I try and do them faster, and I also try and do more of them. So by the end of a training plan, I'm up to eight or ten of them, and I'm doing them faster than I was when I started. And it's amazing the results you'll see in doing those uh, uh, Yasso repeats. Uh, so gotta love Bart and gotta love uh, Yasso's. Then three things on, on race day. Um, one is uh, hanging out with the good folks from Ultra Running. Uh, Golden Harper, the, the founder of uh, Ultra Running, did a, uh, a, a uh, gait and uh, stride clinic with us, which was just awesome. Uh, and I applied it during the race, and it was amazing. Uh, seems very simple, uh, but a lot of runners, they'll either use go boxing style or they'll go Quasimodo where their arms are flailing all around. He teaches, you know, for your arms to be very tight to the body, uh, but chicken wings. So if you look to the side... It's almost a chicken wing shape. Uh, the elites have it at a much tighter angle. Uh, you may be down more like here. I try and keep them you know, somewhere in between, uh, but he calls it the chicken wing, but the other is chest out. So you don't need to lean forward. When he did my gait analysis, I was running too perpendicular. So you know, lean with a, a bit of a chest out. I did it, I noticed a difference, even just something, a, a tip that I just picked up. Um, I love that guy. I love his shoes, and I'll talk about the shoes in a second. And then uh, the uh, second thing on, on race day uh, was shoot the moon. Uh, everyone at some point during a marathon starts getting fatigued. You start looking down, which is very bad. Uh, your shoulders slump. You get tense. Um, and I typically do the, the arm shake out somewhere in the race. He's got a great tip. It's called shoot the moon. And if you're, again, feeling stressed and your form's not quite right, shoot your arms up and you'll instantly feel relaxed. Your chest will go back out. You'll go back to the chicken wings. And I did that several times through the race and, oh my God, what a difference. Uh, it helped me out quite a bit. And then uh, the last thing is the shoe itself. I, I told you in my, my shoe review last time I might run with them race day. I couldn't say more great things about this shoe. Uh, one is a zero drop. Uh, first off, uh, you know, the shoe companies have tended to increase the heel size, which is very bad. Uh, so he's decreased the heel size. And it's zero drop, meaning that your, your heel isn't going to be higher than the front of your foot. So it's more natural for your body. It does take a little bit of getting used to. Um, my calves are a little tight, but I, I, I ran these race day and a comfortable stride, it, you, I didn't know they were there. My feet didn't hurt. Um, and there's also the foot, the, the foot shaped toe box, which uh, again, I, I talked about how it, it looks a little bit abnormal, but yet it's normal because it's foot shaped. Uh, it makes total sense. So you're not jamming all your toes into a, a slice of pizza shape. Uh, it's a comfortable, comfortable shoe. And it led to my most fantastic half marathon I've ever had. So check them out. This is the Torin. 
Uh, they've got a, 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 a really cool New York City version. I might be buying a pair of those here in two weeks when I'm uh, towing the line in New York City Marathon. So those are my six now not-so-secret tips. I've got one bonus tip uh, in the race. Uh, I use my own hydration, so I use SOS. And a uh, simple hydration water bottle. I'm not a fan of carrying water bottles in a race. It's, you feel weighed down. I mean, the the uh, the army style uh, water belts that that string around your back. This thing, uh, it's got a little notch. You slip it in the back of your waistband. You don't even know it's there. Um, I've now used this in three half marathons. It doesn't carry a lot. Uh, I'm even considering toting two of these for New York City, uh, either that or refilling it at some point during the race. Um, they've got small packets, um, so I could add those at the end. But anyway, those are my now not-so-secret tips to your best distance race. Thanks for listening, and this is Ty Godwin from SeekingBostonMarathon.com.